let's make a game. Customising actors. We've already imported some actors into our game, but they aren't very interesting yet. Without behaviours, actors really can't do much at all. To breathe some life into Mambo and our enemy, Pronga, let's take a look at the actor editor and add the behaviours included in the crash course kit. Okay, Customising Mambo. If you haven't closed Mambo Actor yet, click its tab to select it. Mambo, got you. Otherwise, navigate to the dashboard and double click on the Mambo Actor from the Actor Types as part of the library. The familiar appearance page of the Actor Editor appears. It's not familiar yet, is it? We've just opened it, we've just started seeing it. Skip over to the Properties tab by clicking its corresponding blue button at the top of the editor. Uh, what we do? Appearances, got you. Check to see that Mambo is a member of the players group and this will, oh, we need properties, which is that one, okay. Check to see that Mambo is a member of the players group. This will ensure that Stencil will handle collisions how we intend. So we want to look at properties for Mambo, which is in this, this section here. And we look down here to see if he's in a group, which is players. So we've got, there are different types of groups. And there, there's our players one. This is quite important, so we'll, we'll go a bit slower. Definition. Groups let you categorise actors in order to tell Stencil what kind of actors should collide with each other. Groups can also let you treat different classes of actors differently. And we've got an entire article devoted to groups and how they affect collisions. Um, and if you want uh, to, I'll, I'll be putting a link in here with that tutorial all by itself. So uh, if you want to go straight to that, uh, that video, you, uh, you can. Otherwise, there'll be a link at the end of this video for that too. Feel free to look at the collision and physics tab as well. They contain additional settings that let you customise how Stencil's physics engines treats the actors. Uh, but for our purposes, the default settings will work just fine. So let's have a little look. So we've got um, the collision. Uh, it says drag and drop shapes around. And it, for me, it looks like a, a, a collision box. So if anything pops into that box, it, the, the game knows that uh, something's collided with it. And what was physics? So what kind of actor type determines whether the actor type can move or not? So it cannot move, can't be pushed, like e.g. a platform, or is normal, which is normal. Can rotate, nope. Um, affected by gravity. Gravity exerts a force on all actors in the scene, yes. So that's cool. We'll go back to properties. Um, okay, we're going to move on to the behaviors tab where the real customization begins. Start out by clicking the behaviors button right next to the appearance button. The following scene screen, and the following screen will appear. So behaviors, and that's right. Click on the big dotted rectangle. When the dialog appears, click on the actor behavior category located in the logic area of the game center. Select the walking behavior, and then finally click choose. So, Click here to choose a behavior to attach to the actor. It opens up the behaviors for actors. We're going to click on walking and choose. We're taken back to the actor editor. Note the, uh, note, notice the addition of the walking behavior in the list on the left. Definition. Um, attributes are customizable values that make behaviors reusable and easy to modify. For more about attributes, see our introduction article about them. And again, if you wanted to have a meet have a look at that, I'll be putting a linking right here and you can go straight to that video. Let's start customizing these attributes. So these are the attributes. Move right key, no control. Move left key, no control. Speed, idle right animation, idle left animation, walk right animation, walk left animation. Okay, first change move right key and move left key to the right and left controls respectively. Okay, so move right key, right, move left key, left. Controls map physical keys, controls map physical keys on the keyboard to names you can refer to you and your behaviors. If you ever decide to change the actual key, you just have to change it once in one place. 
see our controls article for more information. Once again, have a look at our link, uh, and when I do the video, you'll see the link there, and you'll be able to uh, click on it and have a little look yourself. Number eight, then choose the desired animations by clicking on the choose an animation button and selecting the animation sequences you want. Okay, choose animation. So this is idle right animation. So idle right, okay. Uh, idle left, okay. Walk right, so to walk right, okay. And walk left, I should imagine. Walk left animation, walk left, okay. And that's it for the behavior, for the first behavior. Let's add the rest and customize them in a similar way. To add more behaviors, click the Add Behavior button on the lower left-hand corner of the editor. Uh, so we need jumping. Okay, so we'll add a behavior. Jumping. Choose. Um, and let's just do it. Let's go through it. The jump key. Um, do we want a sound? Oh, jump sound. Jump, of course. Uh, jump right animation, jump right, okay, jump left, okay. Um, stomp on enemies, okay, so we had another behavior, so we're going to add a behavior. Stomp on enemies, and choose, uh, what's it saying here, stompable group, enemies, alright, enemies. Jump key, jump. Um, die in a pit and reload, nothing to configure. Right, oh, we have to do that. So add behavior. Die in pit and reload. <laughs> Choose. Nothing to configure. So we should have, on our left, on our left there, we should have walking. Walking. Jumping. Stomp on enemies, die in a pit. Uh, customizing Pronger. Pronger will be similar to set uh, similar to set up the Mambo. Switch over to his tab, or open him up from the dashboard if need be. Click on the Properties button as we did for with Mambo, and find the Group drop down. Okay, let's just do that. Let's... Properties, Group drop down. Now he is enemies. Uh, I'm just going to save it. Okay. Go ahead and change Pronger's group to enemies. All that's left to do with Pronger is to add a single behavior. Click on the behaviors button and add the stompable behavior located under the collisions category. Customize the follow two, att two attributes and leave the others as they are. Okay, well, let's have a look at this. So let's add a behavior, behaviors, add a behavior. Uh, he's stompable, so we'll choose that. And we need to choose an animation, which is hurt eye. Is that right? Okay. And then there's stomp is the thing. All the super prong has single behavior. Customize the forest. Let's choose that. Stomp. Note, as you can tell, this behavior makes pronger stompable. Like a Goomba in Super Mario Brothers, Pronger will die when he hit when hit from above, and play a sound when this happens. If you click the Edit Behavior button, you can peek at the code behind this behavior. All right. If you click the Edit Behavior button, which is up here. Uh, so there you go. So when created, set active value being stomped. For self to false, set active value, disallow movement for self to false. A bit of a mystery at the moment, but let's continue to part four. Part four, creating a scene. <laughs> now that we have our resources in place and our actors configured, we can create a scene. Definition. Scenes are game levels that get populated with tiles and actors we've created. You can even attach behaviors to scenes, although we won't be doing so in this tutorial. Creating a new scene from the dashboard. 
Click the scenes category, followed by the large dash tri tri la la dashed rectangle. Now let's go back here. So the dashboard. Scenes, got ya. Okay. Um create new scene dialogue would appear. Right, okay, so choosing. Okay, so let's set up. The create new scene dialogue will appear. Let's click that then. Got ya. Enter a name of your choosing. Um, let's do the place. Um, let's have stencil create a pretty sky background for us. Is that all we need to do? All right, okay. All right, okay. Uh, pretty sky background for us by clicking the color drop down and selecting vertical gradient. So there's this thing down here, vertical gradient. And um, we can um, we can get the colors. So let's let's create um, a sort of dark blue and a light blue. And when you finish, the dialogue should look something like the picture below. Yep. Uh, twenty width twenty tiles, height twelve tiles. Well, that's got thirteen there. Let's put thirteen. And 30 pixels for the tiles height. Create. And there we go. Nice. Right. The scene designer will open. The interface may remind you of some popular painting programs and is just as intuitive to use. Okay, so we've got a pencil, a move tool, a fill tool, insert column, right? Add stick joint, add region, add terrain. Zoom in and some tiles over here. Let's add some tiles to our scene and they'll form the ground that our characters will stand on. First, make sure that the pencil tool is selected from the toolbar on the left hand side of the editor. Check. Click on the upper left hand tile in the tile section of the palette on the right hand side of the screen. Done. And place it on the bottom left hand side corner of the scene by left clicking. There. Now select the middle tile. Um, all right, and, do, and, put, and it draws along as well, right to the end. And I suspect we click on the last one, and there we go, some ground. Now select the rightmost tile in the same row of the palette. Place it in the rain, remaining empty slot on the scene below. Check. Now we get to add Mambo and Pronga to the scene. Click on the Actors tab in the palette. Ah, here. There we go. Um, if you move your mouse over the scene, you'll notice that Mambo follows the cursor. Click on the Actors tab. All right, yeah. Um, left click near the ground to place him in the scene. Cool. Note, if you hold down the Shift button, you can snap the actor to the grid. Is it that then? Shift, press shift. Oh, I see, yeah. Rather than wobbly. So I'll pop him there. Now select Pronga and place a few of them in the scene as well. Your final scene might look something like this. Okay. So I'm going to press shift and put one, two, three Prongas in. Um, adding gravity. Press the physics button between the events and the background buttons on the top of the screen. And in vertical gravity section, type in 85 to simulate real world gravity. Okay, hang on. Events and background. Events. Oh, physics. There we go. So gravity, vertical, down, 85. 85. Okay. Um, and continue to part 5. Test your game. Click the test game button on the top of the toolbar to play your game. Right. Test game up here. There it is. There's test scene there, but there's test game up here. So let's press that.
Cool. I can't see the bottom of. I can't see my my scene. I can't see my tiles. You can walk with the left and right arrow keys and jump with the space bar. Try pushing the pronger actors around or jumping on them. If you fall off the screen, the scene will reload. Oh yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, let's get back to my scene. Why? Why is it? Um, scene properties height. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. So that's that twelve. Okay. Exactly. And there we'll finish. Right, hi again. Um, I'm back. I'm just. Uh, this is just the end of the video, and I just want to kind of um, explain why that didn't work. The the reason why we were getting kind of funny little um, a little bit on there. It was in properties, and the height. I put the height at 13, and actually the height was 12. Um, so anyway, so that's that's what we can kind of do to fix that. Press OK. Now, as a little addition to this, I've started to explore different shapes and use different shapes with uh, the tile sets and maybe you want to do the same thing as well move things about have a little play with these kind of things so you can move elements with the arrow tool you can kind of grab them and literally shift them about uh, you can draw different sections with this tool um, leave all these tools for now <laughs> just have a little play with this and then test your game and if it all works out well, it should look something like this. Let's have a little peek. Great, and we can Oh cut. Oh get down. There we go. Hey. And resets it. So um yeah, do try these kind of things out. Modify your game a little bit hack into it, uh, make sure you uh, see how things work, and thanks for listening, this is the end of part two, uh, and we'll be doing other, other tutorials for Stencil very soon. Stay tuned, bye bye. <laughs>